So you will have seen on the channel as of late, Nico Luro of the Silver Screen Dudes, who you should subscribe to, of course, has been a big advocate for the indie darling I've had a chance to do. Movie interviews with Indian art house actresses, actors and directors. I've had a chance to review a load of indie movies, which I'm a big believer in supporting to counter that soundbite of they don't make original movies anymore, which is nonsense. How many original movies have you actually gone out and found versus just been bombarded with the trailers for the latest big movie? I bet you've seen that Deadpool 3 trailer a bunch of times, haven't you? But how many original movies have you actually seen this year that weren't just big tentpole mass marketed movies? Well, on that note, as I said, I've been doing a lot of reviewing of those types of movies on the channel recently. And if you've seen the thumbnail, you'll see that I'm frustrated. And the frustration with this movie is two-pronged. On the one note, it frustrates me that I think hardly anyone's going to see it because it didn't have a big marketing budget, because it was as, it's as indie as it gets. And on the other note, it's the way it's made, I think, is going to put a lot of people off. And just let, let, let me talk you through what I mean by that, because Double Exposure, as you can see on screen right now, was actually... A Raindance Film Festival Spirit of Raindance nominee. Which by proxy tells you, if you put any stock or merit into the people at Raindance and what they vote for, which you should, these people know what they're talking about, but tell you that this movie's got some good in it, man. But th herein lies the problem of the fact that it is a very art house, mega low budget indie movie. Because the themes in it that are explored are brilliant the way they are presented is incredibly unique and it puts it does what so many movies fail to do which is put an original spin on themes which are in some parts a bit taboo and in other parts potentially not everyone's cup of tea which i guess makes them taboo in some ways but always presented when they are presented on the big mainstream they're always presented in the same way this movie does a really really fine job of reinventing the wheel but where the problem comes in and i think for those of you who seek this out and please do go and support original cinema but for those of you who listen to me and seek this out between your inside out twos and your bike riders and your deadpool threes and you want to support an independent movie i think this movie is going to frustrate you and the reason being is that despite the themes in it being interesting and despite the way that they edited the themes, uh, edited the movie, sorry, to convey the themes, really interesting. And despite the fact that in some of the ways it presents these themes, it really does a very fine job of reinventing the wheel, as I've said. There are scenes where you can see how green, and by green I mean how raw, how unrefined for lack of a better word some of the mise-en-scene some of the performances and some of the directing is there are genuinely scenes in this movie which are uh, not not to crap on it but there are scenes in this movie which are genuinely should we say oh they're they're they're, they're like mm, they're like tommy we sows the room like there's a scene with two men fighting which is one of the most deplorably cheesy poorly acted and badly put together scenes i have seen since tommy wiseau's cult classic um and the rawness of this movie the greenness of this movie the 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 lack of refinement of this movie I believe is going to put a lot of people off. Now, if you've seen my review for Berman's Tales, Fall of the Roman Empire, you'll know that I've said this before, but you do have to look at independent movies with a different lens. And what I'd encourage you to do if you're going to look at these types of movies is not look at them at face value the way you would a big, big blockbuster or big mass marketed movie now a lot of you may say oh nico you're reaching out you're just trying to find positives and actually it's just a bad movie that attitude is essentially the problem i'm describing because there is a lot to reproach this movie for like it is poorly paced it is poorly made it is unbalanced it is heavy-handed in some parts it's 
it uses some cheesy editing techniques and even more cheesy performances in some part. In some part. But the things it is discussing, exploring, the cautionary tale it tells. I haven't even gone on to what the hell the movie's about. <laughs> Look at me. Five minutes in, haven't even told you what the damn movie's about because it seems like a big rant. Oh, well, I guess that's the type of review we're doing today. Um, movie's good, though. <laughs> y y you need to evaluate these movies by what they're trying to get across rather than comment on why potentially they fail to do it to the same standard and quality as the movies you're used to seeing because essentially the reason they fail to do that is time and money which these independent movies lack by proxy this movie itself was made literally during the sag after righteous strike and they were allowed to do it because it's so low budget and independent but okay quick sum up <laughs> about what the hell the movie's about and then i'm going to score it photographer failing photographer riddled with grief after his ex-girlfriend commits suicide her ghost haunts him that haunting affects his everyday being you find out she's not as sweet and innocent in peaches and cream as some of his memories may portray the movie tricks you into believing what is real what is not by again telling you a non-linear narrative where you don't know if you're in his projected mind of how things could have been or if you're actually in a flashback that's freaking clever, man. And the fact that the movie chose to go down that route, I applaud it for. But as I said, it's green, it's raw, it's really, really far, 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 far from perfect. So as a result, I have to score, not Berman's details, I have to score, I have to score double exposure. I'm going to give it maybe a bit of a harsh three and a half out of ten. And I think I'm viewing this. I think... I, <laughs> I think it's fair if I'm evaluating it as as I think your average audience member would. Because, listen, it's all very well for me to stand here as an aspiring critic and on my soapbox and be like, well, you should do better to understand this movie. At the end of the day, we're all here to enjoy movies. And I do think, unless you're a really ardent film fan, and if you're not, that's not a diss, but unless you're really the most ardent film fan, you might struggle to find any enjoyment from this movie at all like you've really got to look deep inside for the themes the messages and what it's trying to get across if you view it through that there's a lot of good to be had but the wider picture makes it a highly restrictive watch because of as i said how green it is so for that reason i can't really score it high because it's so restrictive so i yeah i maintain my score but Despite my bad score, I would still say it's one you should go and see and go and make your own mind up about. Now, I'd love to know if anything I've said makes you think, actually, do you know what? Yeah, I'll give it a try. Or if it's more a question of, uh, no, three and a half out of ten, that's all I need to know. F no, I'm not seeing this. So let me know. Thoughts down below. What's your response to this review going to be? You going to go seek it out or not? If you are seeking it out, I want to know what you thought of it. Have I been too harsh? Have the, has the review been fair and balanced? As always, let me know. But we've got more reviews coming up. We've got an interview with BBC Radio 2's OJ Borge again, where we're discussing Lord of the Rings. We've actually got an interview with one of the crew members from Double Exposure. Uh, one of the lead actresses, Katie Cohen, is going to be on the channel uh, next week. So do stay tuned for that. And in order to stay tuned, you need to hit the subscribe button right there. And remember to tickle the notification bell so you always know when we've got a new video going out. And speaking of a new video, there's another one right here. Go ahead and click on either of those. And I will see you right here on the channel again for more reviews, more movie reviews from me, Nico Lira, of the Silver Screen Dudes. Thank you as always for watching. Bye for now.